Hi everyone, we, welcome to Dhan Podcast. So today we have with us uh, Kiru Bakaran Rajendran. He is founder of uh, algo trading firm Square Off. Uh, Kiru uh, is uh, himself a trader and is in markets for almost 14 years now. Uh, Kiru is well known for his articles on in trading and investing on Quora. Uh, he has written more than 1200 plus articles on trading and investing and he has been read more than 15 million times uh, on Quora. He, he was also recognized as one of the top traders for money control. Uh, Kiru has trained more than 10,000 you know, new uh, beginners uh, who wanted to get into markets. Uh, so that's a phenomenal achievement, uh, you know. Uh, so welcome, Kiru. And uh, so how you are enjoying Mumbai? Thanks, thanks, Jay. Thanks for having me in this session. Yeah, Mumbai is good. So this is you know, just the second time that I'm coming to Mumbai. So even though you know, it's a rainy season, monsoon season, yeah, it's fine. You know, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's raining heavily here. So, you know, you, you have been welcomed by rains here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, Kiru, you know, uh, uh, what's your passion, right? Uh, uh, apart from markets, what do you love to do? I watch a lot of movies. See, I've been uh-huh. watching movies from the age of three or four. And you know, so far, I would have watched more than 1,000 movies so far in all different languages. Okay. So, if there is two things that I really love about. One is markets and the other one is movies. So, I enjoy, you know, reading about markets as well as I enjoy, you know, watching all these movies. Wow. So, who is your favorite star? Uh, with respect to stars, if it is in Hindi, it is Ranveer Singh. Undoubtedly, ah, it is okay. Ranveer Singh. <laughs> and if it is in Tamil, it's Danush. Yeah. And in English, it is DiCaprio. It's DiCaprio, okay. So, uh, Kiru, you started your journey uh, way back in 2010, I believe. Right? Yeah, it's around in 2008, yeah. right. Okay, so how has your trading journey been, you know? Like, you know, when I started trading in 2008, mm-hmm. like, I remember it was the time, mm-hmm. you know, when uh, Mukesh Ambani was announced as the richest person in India okay. because of his, you know, uh, Reliance Industries market capitalization mm-hmm. shot up so much, he became the richest man and that news was there across all, you know, media mm-hmm. and uh, again, you no know, Sensex was reaching to a certain extent and okay. Nifty was reaching to a 6,000 mm-hmm. levels. Mm-hmm. That was a peak of bull markets. Okay. So everybody were talking about markets back then. So mm. I started uh, no, reading those news and everything. I opened an account with you know, Sher Khan, just like everyone else, and started trading directly. So one thing that, you now looking back, if I see that one thing that, you know, whatever the decisions that I took back then, mm-hmm. if something is really good is, mm. I did not waste so much of time doing the analysis part. Mm. Like I directly went into the markets, okay. whatever the money that I had as a scholarship money of some 5,000 rupees, yeah. I you know uh, dabbled with that and started learning about it. Yeah. Because if I have to wait for, you know, learning everything and then started doing mm-hmm. it, like you wouldn't, you know, learn all these things about markets. Because when it comes to markets, only when your money is involved, you will know like, okay, this is what this emotion part would come in. Because right. if you're doing paper trading, emotions part wouldn't be there. Correct. So for, from 2008 to 2014, almost for uh, no, six years, I was you know, completely news-based trader. Mm-hmm. So it was completely random. Whatever the stocks that you know, people publish in you know, social media, back then only output was there. Mm. So you know, in social media or in SMS or you know, if someone talks any uh, stocks, about you know during a news channel or a mm, newspaper mm, i just you know try to trade it mm. but only from 2014 almost after six years i started you know trading rule based trading mechanism so from news based i moved to rule based okay. only from 2014 onwards okay. so it took me almost six years okay. to realize okay whatever i was doing was completely wrong okay okay so so when you move to rule based trading in 2014 how it's different from you know a discretionary trading See, when, uh, you know, when you trade completely based on discretionary, it is what you have observed so far in the, you know, the mm-hmm. recent past. Mm-hmm. Based on that, you take a decision. Okay. But you know, there is no uh, quantifiable data behind it. There okay. is no specific back test behind it. Mm-hmm. So you need to have a proper process. So only when there is a process, there will be a progress. Okay. So we need to know, you know from starting from athletes, starting from you know, actors, anyone who is you know, really successful in their own industry, right. they would have followed their own process. Okay. So with respect to trading also, we need to know what is the right process mm. so that once you follow that process, eventually you would make money. So I remember I was reading a book called How I Made $2 Million by Nicholas Darvas. Okay. So that was the first book that I read in 2014, mm. so uh, when I was working in Infosys. So I read that book you know, during a night shift. So after reading that book, I realized that book was all about a person called Nicholas Darvas, mm-hmm. who is actually a dancer 
who okay. travels across the world for stage performance okay. that guy doesn't know anything about markets but he was able to make 2 million dollars back in 1960s and 70s oh. just by fo- following certain process mm. some rules right. so he has written a detailed book about his own journey so okay. after reading that book it gave me you no know, huge conviction okay if you also want to have your own rules and follow a rules and then trade based on that probably you have a higher success ending up becoming a profitable trader so that is when i slowly you know started moving to rule based trading okay okay that's excellent so when you uh, get into a rule based trading right so you have to keep your emotions aside right right so uh, that that's the biggest challenge in market right, right. If somebody who wants to start their trading or somebody who is in the first few months or uh, a year of a journey you know the emotion plays a very big role right so for for anyone who has started his journey in trading right so what would be your advice to him how he should create that balance between you know following a rule based trading and keeping his emotions aside see with respect to emotions no emotions cannot be removed at all so as long as you, your own money is involved yeah. emotions can't be removed okay. the one thing no i have written a, a story mm-hmm. which no any trader could relate to it is like it's a story about a person called uh, milo so okay. this person is from no ancient greece period mm. so this person was actually you know a six or seven times you no know, championship like he is the strongest man mm. he is a you know, mm. best wrestler mm. the world has ever seen right. so during this greece period everybody like you no know, was so crazy about this person called milo and everybody wanted to know what is the success success behind this particular person mm. because he is you no know, so consistent he is you no know, winning championship year after year people wanted to know about it and then there was a championship uh, you know match that was announced yeah, yeah. between milo and another competitor mm, mm. so in that uh, you no know, championship what they have announced is okay these are the two guys who are going to you know meet in a wrestling match going forward in okay. a few years down the okay. line and you know people who are you know following these two people can you know witness this match live or yeah. you know, weight lifting whatever mm, some mm, some mm. you know a match related to the you know their okay. weight strength so all these you no know, audience wanted to know how the snow world championship milo is going to get trained for that mm-hmm. and how this competitor is going to get okay. trained for that okay so this competitor directly went to a you know a market and he bought a big bull a very mm-hmm. big bull and mm-hmm. he wanted to lift that to train hard okay. so everybody was you know wondering okay this is really good like he is going to train hard because mm-hmm. he bought a big bull yeah and then he fo- they followed milo and milo went to a you know market and he bought a small calf mm-hmm. and everybody was wondering why you know the world champion should buy a small calf because he should also buy a big bull in fact mm. bigger bull than the other competitor Correct. so that yeah. he could yeah. win but nobody had any clue so what happened was uh, the you know the following days and following months this competitor was trying to lift that bull from day 1 mm. and he couldn't lift it because mm. obviously it weighed so much right yeah. but milo he wherever he goes he used to carry that calf wherever he goes mm. so you know if he goes to a market if he goes to beach if he goes to walking every single day he used to carry that calf okay so what happened was over the years he got used to that weight of the calf okay and eventually when the calf grew into a big bull he mm. didn't even realize that that has grown into a big bull okay. and he couldn't know feel the difference in weight okay so when the match came mm-hmm. he was able to lift this bull effortlessly yeah. because yeah. the calf has already grown into a big bull over his shoulder no over a large period okay. of time okay but the guy who bought the big bull on a day one mm-hmm. he couldn't lift it you no know, still because you no know, he is not used to that weight Correct. so this is exactly what emotions would do in trading so right. starting from day 1 if you're trading with the capital that you can't afford to lose Correct. definitely you can't make the right decision yeah. but slowly if you increase like if you have a capital of 1 lakh start with 10000 then gradually increase it to 25 then gradually increase it to 1 lakh right. then you get used to the market fluctuations day in and day out so you would precisely know okay if the market goes down this is how much my portfolio could go down Correct. if it goes up this is how much it could go up. so based on that they can slowly gradually improve it. so yeah. the emotions part would come in only when people no trade with the money that they have no can't afford to lose yes. or if they are no trading with the borrowed capital mm-hmm. if no most people will think okay i made money in last 2 or 3 months probably i made 50% i should go for a personal loan of 14% and i could no repay back Correct. using my trading Correct. profits yes. because when they no trade based on these borrowed capital mm-hmm. their emotions will come in mm-hmm. so there is always a you know urgency to pay it back with emis right. so every month you have to know uh, like you have to make profits no matter Correct. what so all this puts so much of pressure mm-hmm. so as long as you know you have this right capital uh, to trade then it is easier to handle otherwise it is very difficult in handling the emotion part correct, correct. that's that's a wonderful story right you know <laughs> so this 
uh, I believe it's something called conditioning, right? right. So when you, when you become a weight trainer, right. you gradually increase your weight, you exactly. know, as your body starts developing. Exactly. Or are, is, is your, when your body is able to, you know, is conditioned to, you know, lift that kind of weight. Right. So you do not, yeah. you know, you shouldn't focus too much on the outcome because Correct. outcome yeah. is in the market's hands. Yes. Only the risk is in our hands. Yes. So as long as we are able to control the risk, the outcome would definitely be in favor of us. So that's a wonderful lesson for you know anybody who wants to just get into markets or who has started. <laughs> yes. Now you know coming back uh, to a point where uh, last two years you know prior to 2022 from March 20 till December 21 you know it has been a phenomenal year, phenomenal couple of years. And anybody who has entered in market in those two years you know have seen a one-sided rally right okay and m most of the newcomers who have come into market they want to try their hands with a very limited capital and they want to get into the buying side of options you know uh, so what's your advice to people you know who feel that buying option uh, buying out of money option or having a bias towards only buying options is able to give you a better return so they would have faced some kind of you know losses right. in last five six months so with your experience of 14-15 uh, years, how would you advise them? See, with respect to buying options versus you know, selling options, most people get into options buying because of you no know, lower capital requirement. Exactly. Yeah. And second thing is, multiple times they they have seen you know, a five rupee option. You no, know, within five rup from five rupees it goes to 50, 500 rupees within few minutes. Correct. So they always expect that outcome. Mm -hmm. Like if someone who is you no know, trading recently that to last two years. Yeah. Why most people are into option buying is because the market has seen the greatest volatility when they started trading, like during the mm -hmm. Corona pandemic. Correct. So during those extreme volatility period, yes. all these options tends to move up rapidly. Mm -hmm. So 5 rupees goes to no 10, uh, 50 rupees and then 500 rupees. So they expect that this kind of outcome could tend to repeat every you know, single month or Correct. every single Correct. week. Yeah. Especially if you observe most people who trade the specific options mm -hmm. buying on expiry days. Right. Like they say it is zero or hero. Like you know whether I put all the money, <laughs> yeah. it goes to zero or I become a hero yes. so that it could you no know, generate yeah. so much of returns. But when I test it statistically, like you take a large data sets for the last five years, mm. starting mm. from the introduction of weekly options from 2017 to till date. Okay. And then if you, you know run a data analysis and find out whether you know this uh, strategy of buying an options mm. that you no know, that to a five rupee option and ten rupee option does it really make you no know, positive returns? It can make on a summation on total summation, but for an but out of ten trades. Only you know uh, two or three trades would end up in profits. Mm. The remaining seven trades would end up in loss. Correct. So you no, know, as an option buyer, you have to keep facing these losses back to back. Correct. So and these back to back losses would you no know, put a you know, uh, like they lose their confidence. The yes. moment they see a five losing streaks, they lose the confidence. Yes. Then they'll move from one strategy to the other strategy. Right. So option buying, it is all about Pareto principle. Your 80% of your profits will come from 20% of the trades if you are doing option buying. Correct. But those 20% of big profits, we never know when it's going to come. So, but for that, you have to take all each and every trade. Correct. But that is you know, really, really psychologically difficult mm -hmm. for any option buyer. Yeah. So if you are an option buyer, the best advice, what I would say is, if you are having a capital of X, divide that X by 10, say suppose if you are having a capital of 1 lakh, mm. don't put all your 1 lakh in that one single trade, okay. put 10,000 in first trade. Mm. So for each and every trade you are risking just no part of your overall capital Correct. Correct. and then you know do the mm. same option buying, mm. there is no wrong in it. Mm. The position sizing should be done correctly so that even if one trade goes wrong, you are still alive to take the next trade. Correct. So only when you put all your capital in one single trade to mm. recover all your you know, losses or Correct. doing revenge trading, then yes. it would be really difficult. True, 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 yeah. So, uh, how this idea of square off came, you know? Yeah, uh, that you no know, came when I was working, like okay. I was working in Infosys back okay. then and it was really difficult for me to manage my job as well as trading. Okay. Like, you know, I, I was working in different shifts as well. Mm -hmm. I was supporting an American client, so I to, used to work in night shifts. Okay. Again, morning and have to come yeah. back you know, the, to you know, home and then have to do trading by sitting in front of system 9 to 3. Right. It is really tiresome doing all these yes. manual tasks. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I have a rule-based system. For an example, mm. if a stock goes above 200 day moving average, I have to buy it. For mm. an example, if it goes below, I have to sell it. Sell so it. all these conditions Correct. are pre-built. Yeah. So instead of putting all these conditions and then seeing the chart, okay, when the conditions are satisfied and then buying it manually, if I could code it and then make it an automated system, then it could no take care of my no trading activity mm -hmm. because I'm not going to analyze at that time. I'm yeah. I'm done with analysis already. Yes. Just feeding in the rules to the system. Right. The system would no execute my rules. That's yes. all. 
and when i you know started doing it, it back then it costed me so much because mm-hmm. no brokers were providing free api mm-hmm. and no bro- brokers now no most of the brokers are providing free api and it is easy to integrate and you can start you know, doing algo trading within few you know, two or three days back then it took me more than one and a half months just to code the part and then to deploy it and run it in a separate server it's so it took so much of time but after few months i realized that okay this actually you know meets my problem because as a you know a working professional in it who do not have time yes this solves my problem mm-hmm. and on and also it ended up in profits okay. so if this could solve my problem obviously if, if we could make this as a saas product yeah. and give it to users based on a yearly yeah. licensing fee all they have to do is they don't need to do all this no coding and everything they just have to subscribe to any of the bots or any mm-hmm. of the trading strategies mm-hmm. based on the historical data sets okay and then they could just feed in the you no know, input based on their input it is going to get executed so since it solves my problem yeah. as a trader yeah. i thought this Correct. could solve you no know, any trader's problem and that is how square of was born yeah that's great you know so you have tried and tested your concept right and then you have become an entrepreneur right, in putting right. that so as you said you know uh, earlier you know uh, getting uh, the data you know getting it checked getting this api integration done it used to take lot of time right. so how has been your journey with dhan now on dhan also you know uh, uh, square off is available also on right, right, dhan right. right so how how has been your journey with us we of all the brokers that we have integrated so we have integrated with 10 different brokers and dhan is the no only only one broker which we have integrated within no two days like all other brokers took so much of time the good part with respect to dhan api is yeah. everything is clearly documented Correct. so you know a, a developer when he tries to you know build a platform based he completely relies on the you know uh, the input that has been given by the broker and with other brokers or most of the brokers it is you know broken like sometimes it will be you know towards one specific set of information but when we try to dig more there will be you know a lack of informations because of which we couldn't complete an integration dhan is one such broker where you know it gives you complete details mm-hmm. makes it much easier to integrate it so we found it you no know, like only two or three brokers even though there are 250 brokers like one, only two or three mm-hmm. brokers provide such good informations so that is why we are able to integrate it much yeah. faster thank you so much that's <laughs> that's a very encouraging word right so i hope we are in the right track we are doing the right things sure, yeah sure sure definitely yeah yeah now coming back to you know your rule based trading and system trading so anybody who is a new guy right i'm i'm talking from a guy who has just entered the market or planning to enter so they have this preconceived uh, notion right that algo trading is something to do with coding something to do with programming so i need to understand that first and then only i can become an algo trader right so what's your view on that one one problem which get solved for those guys is you know getting on the square of uh, you know coming on square of and selecting the strategies but for also somebody who wants to learn more about it is it so necessary to learn coding and programming before getting into this no not at all required see now the algo trading is in a situation mm-hmm. where you know, like for an example 10 15 years before mm-hmm. if you wanted to you know build a website you have okay. to write your own code now right. there is you no know, multiple platforms out there where you can just drag and drop like godaddy is there wix platform is there where you can create your own website in just 5 to 10 minutes mm. without even a single piece of code mm-hmm. so there are so much of no code platforms as now come where you don't need to sit and code each and everything so okay. like for an example we have our own tool called optionx.in okay. where all these strategies people know most people trade options mm-hmm. for no short straddle or short strangle all these you no know, ready made options strategies are already there they just have right. to select it and select whatever their stop losses or targets mm-hmm. accordingly the execution would happen mm-hmm. so for now people who wanted to get into algo trading there are so much of no code platforms available yeah. so we don't really need to learn coding to mm-hmm. get started with algo trading now okay okay right so uh, now the markets have become very volatile yeah. right so do you think it's it's just a passing phase or how has you know you you would have seen from 2010 to 2022 there have been several yeah. phases where the markets have been uncertain right. so what would be your piece of advice to uh, traders See, at this point of time with respect to there is two different advice that i would give one is for traders and the other one is for investors yeah. and you now with respect to uh, my own journey from 2008 i started trading only when, when the market when the whole world was collapsing yes. like you no know, due to 2008 global financial crisis yeah. and then i have seen uh, you know brexit and then i have seen demonetization and you no know, and again covid pandemic Correct. 
ee with my own limited experience what i have seen is after you know every such down move the market moves up you no know, much faster than what it has gone down yes. like you know if you take the historical uh, statistical data mm-hmm. on an average the bull market lasts for 5 years and the bear market lasts for you no know, 15 to 18 months on an average yeah. and if you take people like warren buffett charlie munger peter lynch you know all these people who been in the markets for decades they were you no know, making huge returns for 30 and 40 years and all these people were making huge returns not because of their disciplined approach for 40 years mm-hmm. it is because of the disciplined approach for those 15 months when the whole you no know, world is collapsing yes so how they are able to control their emotions during those you no know, 15 to 18 months decides their overall fortune for the next 40 years correct so that is exactly mm-hmm. what you no know, it's been happening you no know, there is a person called you know many people know about charlie munger and warren buffett they mm-hmm. are the old investors yes. for now mm-hmm. there is one more person called irvin khan Okay. and he was by the time he was you no know, dead it was he was almost 109 years old mm-hmm. and he was a student of uh, benjamin graham okay and he has seen almost you no know, uh, two world wars and one great depression and again you no know, soviet war and again you no know, uh, cold war and he has seen so much of you no know, periods in his 109 years of his journey and what the single most advice that he has mentioned in his own book is all these things like the short term fluctuations will always be there people mm-hmm. just give certain you know, a news or story behind that that's all yeah. so now it's inflation that's all earlier yes. it was some real estate bubble previously it was mortgage okay. so every certain you no know, 5 or 10 years once this kind of information would pass in but we as an investor you just have to keep repeating your you just have to keep investing every single time as a trader all you have to do is just handle the volatility through your own risk management principles okay. so because you no know, these kind of fluctuations will always happen any you know any time it can always happen with respect to trading all we have to do is control the risk so also do not need to focus more much on these news it is just a noise for traders actually we should just ignore those news correct correct so on investing you know it's also been said right that when the whole world becomes fearful you need to be greedy right right right, so right. that's the time you can identify quality stocks right you know which are available at a very cheaper price exactly and most yeah. people that is what they'll you no know, do another mistake also just because a particular stock is cheaper doesn't mean that it is really good correct because if you observe in the last one year if the you know, nifty has corrected 15 or 10 15% maximum yes. but most stocks has corrected you no know, 60 or 70%, 70% or 80% yes, also yes. so they'll think that stock is much cheaper then the other stocks so they tend to buy all those beat and down stocks correct but it is really difficult to make money if we follow that approach what yes. we have to do is okay nifty has gone down 10 to 15% find out what are the other stocks which has not fallen beyond 15%, 15% which has outperformed nifty correct so those are the stocks which are really strong in this weak markets so these stocks would become much more stronger when the market starts rebounding yeah so instead of focusing on beat and down stocks if they focus on stocks which are still showing some strength there is a higher probability of making no returns yeah wonderful that that's again a great piece of advice you know so you need to follow what has outperformed nifty even right. wh- even while market is correcting right, right? right so that's right. a good way of picking stocks right yeah so uh, kiru you know uh, i i believe you know when you get into uh, rule based trading on where you are where you are an active trader you know you need to be very focused yeah. right and apart from your trading hours you know what all things you do do you uh, what kind of books you read do you meditate if you can share you know your uh, post trading life uh, yeah you, uh, with respect to meditation yeah, a lot many people has recommended meditation but controlling my thoughts for 5 minutes is really really tough <laughs> no it's very yeah, hard to yeah. do meditation but the you no know, the other alternate what i found is playing any sport be it cricket or be it badminton i used to play badminton okay. with my friends okay so that complete one hour you wouldn't even think of anything else right. so meditation is all about doing nothing like nothing. you being in the moment yes. so doing that sport activity immensely helps you because for that one hour first thing you are being with your loved ones friends you are yes. going to play yes. with them and okay. second thing you have to focus on the you no know, coat right. like you can't think you no know, anything else during that one hour period when you are playing yes. so that one hour playing every day one hour you no know, shuttle or badminton or any sport would mm-hmm. immensely help you no know, traders and so that greatly helped me and second thing i watch a lot of movies okay. i'm a movie buff yes. as i told yeah. you earlier you no know, yeah. been watching movies from at the age of 3 or 4 yes. so i watch a lot of movies and then i go for a walk run or no i go to you know, do a gym and go for a workout mm-hmm. so i just make sure that at least you no know, one hour or two hours of physical activity is there without you no know, thinking about markets 
okay so the more so you know they always say people have to be disciplined with respect to trading but you can't be disciplined between 9 to 3 if you are not disciplined outside of market hours okay so only when you follow a disciplined life like waking up early in the morning or yeah. doing some every you no know, same routine every single day Correct. that follow you no know, brings a discipline into your own appro- life approach right. that you can replicate in trading if you are not no if you are not uh, no uh, sleeping you know if you are sleeping late and you are not following a proper diet mm-hmm. if you are completely irregular with your own life patterns it is very re- difficult to be you know a disciplined trader okay okay that's that's again go good you need to unwind yeah, after post yeah, post 3 pm definitely. right yeah so as you said you you read a lot right so a, any books you would like to recommend from for our listeners yeah books no there are couple of books so first if you are a trader i would no first book i would uh, recommend is how i made 2 million dollars by nicholas davas yeah and the second book is the unknown market wizards by jack swagger okay so that is a compilation of world's best traders okay like what is their investing approach what are the strategies they followed so it has some three different volumes so that is you no know, one really good book and people who really you know fascinated about uh, quantitative trading or you know algo trading or you know any trading based on the, all these rules and mechanism mm-hmm. people can read about uh, jim simons book the man who solved the markets okay so it is about jim simons who yeah. is you now running in uh, renaissance technologies edge fund so renaissance technologies is the world's best edge fund mm-hmm. so from 1988 to till date they have been running an edge fund which has generated 66% average returns mm-hmm. for almost you no know, 2 to 3 decades Warren Buffett himself has generated only 22 and he has generated three times of mm-hmm. you know what Warren Buffett has generated but his aim is comparatively lesser than Warren Buffett that is why he couldn't you know become much popular but Jim Simons anybody who is into algo trading everyone would know about Jim Simons because the kind of returns that they are generated is without even hiring a single trader in their own mm-hmm. own, own edge fund mm-hmm. they don't hire any wall street mm-hmm. guys mm-hmm. they have hired all you know um, physicists astronauts all those people and started doing all the data analysis okay they you know took some under 200 years of data mm. and from then from there they created all these strategies okay. and okay. using that only they were able to generate so much of it okay. so the man who solved the markets by mm-hmm. jim simons is another book that i would recommend wow that's interesting so if i have to ask you right uh, one mistake which you would advise our listeners you know they should not do that in trading what would be that see uh, winning streaks does more damage than losing streaks like people will think that okay when i'm losing yeah. back to bank mm-hmm. that is going to you know have a bigger dent than you know winning back to bank but i remember i have lost 3 months of my salary in just one day because of this no over confident through winning okay so you know these recency bias would kick in like when you are not continuously making profitable trades back to back you would think okay you have cracked the market yes. would really do good so this will you know put in a lot of over confidence in you mm. so we started betting with a higher bet size correct so i ended up buying a lot of put you no know, call and put options just okay. before huh. an event so yeah. just before you uh, know infosys quarterly results was out mm-hmm. I ended up buying 3 months of my salary in options alone mm-hmm. and the next day I lost everything so everything was gone and just you know as as, long, as soon as the market opened yeah so the one advice that I would say is you no know, always you no know, you can be wrong at any point of time so make sure that you don't put so much of capital in just one trade Correct. and also don't trade options buying just before the event because okay. before an event option iv shoots up so much yeah. so even though your uh, no views are right next day you could still lose money after the event you no know, gets over so it's better to avoid buying options before an event but it's better to buy it after an event so that the you know, premium goes down so you'll we'll getting you know we'll be getting the options prices at relatively cheaper price Okay okay that's again a golden piece of advice I, th- i think we can name this podcast as you know golden <laughs> advices from kiru <laughs> yeah so uh, one last question right so you have uh, become a full trader right then you have become an entrepreneur somebody who has tested success in market now so what would be your piece of advice for someone who wants to leave uh their current job or current you know whatever profession they are in and they want to become a full time trader first advice that i would tell them is don't become a full time trader <laughs> because <laughs> okay. it is really really a lonely world out there see yeah. because a person who is working in a you no know, it or any other company like he have his own colleagues he have his own friends 9 o'clock he comes to his yeah. office he has his people to interact but then when he comes and becomes a full time trader like he'll be all alone sitting at a you know at his home office or he'll be you no know, doing the trading at all alone the most of the people wanted to quit their job and do trading because they hate their job so okay. if you hate their your job and start doing trading, trading. you'll hate trading also 
yeah so it's no no by by now with you know rise of so much of technologies back then if the same platform was available back then when yeah. i was you know working in infosys okay. i would have not quit my job yes. because i can easily you know handle it mm-hmm. and then come mm-hmm. but i came because i wanted to you know run a separate firm which can provide you no know, these services to users and also you no know, trading because when you, you know come and trade completely full time first and foremost thing is there will be so much of pressure for you to make money based on that you have to if say suppose if you have to you no know, take care of your monthly expenses mm-hmm. take care of rents eb bills and so much of things mm-hmm. if you you no know, rely so much on that at least for the initial period then there will be a lot of pressures so the right way would be first trade part time at least for 2 or 3 years and make sure that you are profitable year on year and then if you wanted to quit your job make sure you have one year of expenses at least one year of your you know, okay. monthly expenses as a backup mm. so that you don't need to rely on your trading to meet your okay. monthly expenses okay. so within one year you will know okay whether you could you know, crack it or not okay. beginning you know if you wanted to become a full time trader so once you have all these backup expenses mm-hmm. and then focus on trading then there will not be any you know emotions there will not be any pressure for you correct then after a year you will get used to that process just like the milo story that i yeah, said yeah. then you can slowly gradually move up So thank you so much, Kiru. You know, thanks, for taking thanks, your yeah. time out uh, and and having this wonderful conversation. You know, I am sure uh, our listeners would have learned a lot. Uh, you know, uh, within in this thirty thirty five minutes of discussion, I think there are a lot of you know golden advices which have been given by Kiru. Uh, uh, any new guy who is entering into market or somebody who is already trading, you know, you should stick to what he has said because he has learned from his experience. he has become a self trader full time trader and a successful entrepreneur uh, all the best kiru for your future endeavors and would love to have you again at our uh, sure, office sure. in thank thank you, you thank know, you, thank you so much for having me this thank you, thank you. Yeah.